are back. Look, we're wearing the same clothes as last time. Is it the same day? Most likely. Or is it? We would never do that. Inception. We would never film two at the same time. Oh, who does that? Who would do that? We'd at least change clothing. So therefore, this is five weeks later. Yeah. This is, <laughs> this is the Black Iron Brothers podcast, episode 11. Or 1-1. One, one. No, 11. Okay. Um, <laughs> So we've spoken to you about bench press. We've spoken to you about deadlift. What do you think's next? Guess? Squats. <laughs> well it's done. squats. Well done on guessing that. Um, we needed someone to be like from outside to go. Yeah, we were from outside to go. Squats. Um, yeah, so we're going to talk about squats today. The mistakes people make. Um, Doing them. The, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> doing them! Yeah, the you mistake just, that's a weird mistake. interjection. Doing them is a mistake. Um, yes, yeah. so squats um, are obviously a staple of people's programming. They should be a staple of people's programming, at least in some format, and there should be done forms. regularly. A lot of people hate squats. A lot, I of hate squats. People, a lot of people think that squats are bad for your but knees. They're still a good exercise. Are they bad for your knees? If you do them very badly, they will be if you're really bad at squats. Yeah. But if you do squats right and you have good control and you have good depth and you have a good knee position and you have a good foot position, foot position and a back and position, you have a good back <laughs> position <laughs> and a head position and a good head position, <laughs> which we're going to take you through all of that now. And a good hand position. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so in the last video where we were talking about deadlifts, we spoke about how your hip can go too low and then you lose all of the drive out of your deadlift because you're trying to squat it. Uh, opposite really with the yeah. squat because we're starting from the top the weight is on your back yeah. and what we can do is we can come right to the bottom of the squat and we can kind of use the well we don't want to necessarily bounce but we can use that uh, stretch reflex at the bottom of the squat it's to come back out at the recoil. bottom of it yeah, yeah so we want to be able to go full range of motion now full range of motion to different people is going to mean different things yeah. you could be very much limited in your in what you're able to do and that doesn't mean that you even necessarily have to start with a barbell squat. We are huge fans, obviously, of barbell squats. And when we say barbell squats... And most we, people can get there. Most yeah, people can get there. A lot of people can. But yeah. some people who have limited mobility because they don't have sufficient dorsiflexion, for example, which is like that flexion of the ankle. Yeah. Um, very so common ankle mobility. Being very, issue. very... And that's just because a lot of the time people are standing or walking and they just get really, really tight. Yeah. Um, well, they're so used to you know, wearing certain types of shoes. And yeah, well, like a lot they of shoes. The ability to then, a lot of yeah. shoes shorten the Achilles uh, tendon. Yeah. As well, always up in that heel. Got yeah, Cuban so, heels on. So it's good to be lifting. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I, oh wait. <laughs> Devastating. Sorry to solve on that you one. Like that Cuban heels. Someone liked it. That's Someone okay. out there went. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's always um, like mild amusement. So, uh, <laughs> mild, uh, like a like uh, uh, is enough. That's like. Enough. A, uh, a pun. A pun, which I despise. Yeah. If you know us at all, you, you know that I hate puns. Yeah. And he loves them, and he makes a pun, and then goes, like this proud little, like, hmm, <laughs> didn't I do well? He doesn't see and it. And I just loathe it. Yeah, puns are the best. Um, doesn't divide the room. Anyway. Yeah, and I like to be divisive. We all divisive. hate it. We I want to be pun, divisive. And we like it That's why I like making the Boring. darkest jokes possible. You really. can't do that. No, move on. Not doing it here. No. Cancel. I've cancelled him. Yes. Preemptively cancel yeah. me. Um, so having good foot control is super super important. If you uh, if your heel is coming up off the floor, which is one of the biggest mistakes you see yeah. newbies making, if you say squats, just give me a squat. They will like a body weight squat. You'll often see that. Yeah, you'll depth. see that heel to shifting get up. the depth that they. Yeah. You know to get that enough. Uh, yeah, depth. Sufficient enough. depth where you're in uh, basically full range of motion. Yeah, where your, they will your hip is lower than your knee. Just let that heel come up to to reach a, a new level of depth. Yeah. So there's, there's multiple things that we can do to fix that we can either obviously just change the form in general which could be sufficient to make sure that your heel stays on the ground but you know if someone does have a significantly reduced range of motion they might need to have a raised heel for a period of time which you can either put a plate underneath your heel or you can squat in a squat shoe or uh, you know they're very that makes it easy to reach or it. use a, a raised heel plate whatever but you do um, want to typically you'd want to develop the ability to yes. be able to squat yeah. With just your bare feet. Yeah. Not only is it great for the intrinsic muscles of your feet, 
but it's just gonna be it. You'll be able to then produce force just with your body. Yeah. So so what I was saying before is like you you might not be able to with a bar initially start squatting. You can definitely body weight squat. You can definitely goblet squat. Yeah, like goblet everyone, squat. goblet squats are a great movement and they're a really good introduction into getting comfortable with a bar when you're back. Front loaded. It will yeah. keep you upright and and it sort of naturally makes people keep the weight on their mid front to a degree. Yeah. Because they can't shift forward because they'll drop the weight. There's a lot of the, there's a lot of people who I've started with who really like I put them under the bar to see if they could and it's just a mess and I've tried to fix it with a few cues and I'm like and it's still really really bad and I'm like okay let's see if we can get you onto a goblet squat and instead we put them onto a goblet squat and immediately it's like boom they've kind of like immediately got it. And you can build the strength up that way. Yeah. And some people can't squat the typically most bars in gyms are about 20 kilos. So yeah. Some people can't squat that weight initially. Yeah. And the goblet squat you can obviously like you can gradually increase that progressively overload them to the point where they can handle, typically you want them to be able to handle like a 30 kilo goblet squat and then they'll yeah. be able to do a 20 kilo back squat. Definitely. If you can do a 30, I mean a 30 kilo goblet squat is quite heavy, so if you're able to do it, because yeah. it's front levered, it's a little bit more difficult, you could definitely do a back squat with 20 kilo. But if they, if they really struggle with the back squat position, yes. if you yes. try and transfer them sometimes when they've got, if you've only got a 20, not only, still reasonably decent, but a 20 kilo goblet squat, they sometimes are still like, wow, this is still overwhelming and yeah. I can't get in the position of that kind of stuff. So a goblet squat would be a great place to start for a lot of people, but eventually you do want to try to get to that back squat position where you do actually have the bar on your back. Um, but again, once we've developed sufficient depth, um, we know how to keep our feet flat on the floor. That's already like a lot of the work is done there. The next issues can come with, you know, like maybe either loading too heavy or you don't have sufficient understanding of proprioception, like your own body, and you can have knee cave. So we're kind of starting to shift up the leg now. So we started sort of with the foot where the heel might be coming up off the floor. You don't really ever see someone's toes coming up unless they're sitting way back into their squat. Well, you do see people shift up the heel. And that that would happen in the case, again, okay. much like with the deadlift we were talking Looking about, your lumbar. of people not understanding that the squat is not a geared powerlifting squat where back in the 80s and 90s they used to say, like, sit way back on or, your heel. Or they say sit on a tiny chair, don't they? Yeah, like, and often, exactly. In theory, you are trying to do that because you're trying to get really close to the floor. But people then often interpret that as sit go right back. back onto your yeah. heel and almost just trying to do a hip hinge yeah. right backwards. And much like what we were saying with the deadlift, you know, there's not a right or wrong, there might be someone who's way too far onto the toes and yeah. we will say sit back a little bit more. Yeah. And there are people who are way too much on the heel and we'll say try to bring that knee forward a little bit more. Yeah. So there's no right or wrong answer, it's gonna be an individual difference uh, issue here. Um, but yeah, working up from that foot, so if you can- if So it's mid foot. So it's mid foot again. We spoke, we spoke about in the deadlift, but you want to be in your mid foot and squatting. And again, uh, this is we can we won't really go into this here, but like Chris Duffin, one of my absolute heroes. I, I talk about him quite often, but um, he is incredibly knowledgeable. He talks a lot about rooting with the feet, and if you can like grab onto the floor. And I know that sounds a little bit weird. It doesn't like, mean do this with your toes. Yeah, but it <laughs> does mean trying to have a good like control of where having pressure throughout the entire. I think foot. you're like a gecko. You know, like if you were on the wall, yeah, you're you hooking like, onto huh! it. Yeah, like your heel, yeah. your big toe, and your little toe should all be like yeah. firmly placed on the ground. Um, we don't want to have any of that <laughs> shifting. And if you are shifting in any of those tip toe, big toe, little toe, or heel, you know, there's probably you're losing control. And you're only as strong as your squat. base. Yeah. So that base, if you're if you're squatting from a good base where your foot is controlled, you're already on your way to success with squats. So the so, next thing would be the knee. Um, the you knee, just tap me on the knee. We can't see, case, it. see it. I don't think you can see it. It looks a bit dodgy actually when I'm down there in the hand. Uh, but I tapped his knee. Um, knee caving is probably the biggest issue that people will have around the knee. And that's mostly... Valgus. Valgus stress. Valgus movement, yeah. yeah. Um, Not to be confused with varus. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah, val that valgus movement of the knee, which is basically like this, where you see the knees are like strong, they're in a good position, and you start trying to press back up at the squat, and then suddenly, boom, they cave in. Um, there's a few things for this. Again, rooting can be one of the issues whereby you don't have good control of your feet, and that is sufficient reason for your feet to start, like maybe your feet are starting to turn inward, you're getting that... Um, inward rotation of the foot, and that can be enough for the knees to cave. Inversion. Inversion, exactly, yeah. So you're getting that inversion of the foot, and then- We're trying to make this as pretentious as possible. Let's make it nice and pretentious. <laughs> um, but um, 
that can cause that, obviously. But another thing could just be that you're too weak in a certain area, and typically you move to where your strength is. So yeah, often. so like uh, that can often be weak glutes, for example, could be an indicator that your knees are going to be caving in. It could also be that your your quads just aren't strong enough. Um, so there's multiple things that could be wrong there. So but if you're getting your knee is stronger than your muscles at the beginning, so people often shift in to use yes. the structure a bit like with the deadlift. You use your the, the, people often use a terribly curved cat back in order to lift more than they're actually yeah. their muscles are capable they of can't actually at the do beginning. It. Yeah. So it's exactly the same thing where you'll actually see sometimes actually you know professional powerlifters actually sometimes doing this where they'll let their knees cave way in to get yeah. to the top and then of they the can squat lift more weight because technically you can lift more weight than yeah. that. Miss Amanda Ray, yeah. unbelievable lifter. She's ridiculously good, but, but her squat she, is you know it's a little bit like oh yeah. her knees gonna be all right. She but she is her, incredible. She's amazing, but she definitely yeah. does with really heavy she's squats. She's got six hundred pounds, six hundred, yeah, something like heavier than us. Natural IBF <laughs> world champion. Yeah, yeah, she's, um, she's unbelievable monster. But you would um, be like oh. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, like her knees definitely cave inward. Um, a little excessive. And it's not always, but it's with her really, really heavy sets that but she don't gets kick that. Me because it would hurt. Uh, that would. Yeah, <laughs> she could put a hole through your chest. Yeah, like, yeah. Uh, yeah, definitely. Boosh, <laughs> boosh. Um, but yeah, um, that can just be that you're not strong enough. It could just be that you're not strong enough. So if you're getting excessive knee inward caving, yes, we want to try to develop the glutes. We want to try and develop the quads to try to make up for any imbalance that might be there but it could also be that you're just not strong enough and then you maybe just need to bring the weights down slightly so that you can build it up and keep those knees yeah, in a strong work position. Work on full range of motion in terms of yeah. strength throughout the entire range of motion. Now, what it also could be, and this is a great cue, which is you're not activating, you're not getting your quads and your glutes tense before you drive up with the lift. So a great way of thinking of that is imagine there's two cigarettes underneath your feet and that you're putting the cigarettes out. Oh, yeah? interesting. And I that, that screws, that, that sort of like naturally makes you grip to the floor and activate Activates always a bit of a, sounds like a stupid term. You know, like no, I, I get They're it. already yeah, activated, yeah, but it, it sort of sense. turns them on. Yeah. Yeah. So then your glutes are contracted, ready to take the impact, and your quads are really, really as well. And then when you come down, it's naturally going to cause you to drive the knee out and for you to track with your toes, mm. keeping it on the musculature <clears throat> that you want rather than the structures. And it's the same so thing with the, kind of the this motion your, here. Your glute will your glute will switch on by doing that, but also your abductors as well. Yeah, so yeah. Your, your abductor the abductor is the outside of the thigh. If you're able to activate your glutes properly and you're tight through the glutes, you're gonna feel those abductors switching on as well. And if your abductors are switching on, they're gonna pull the knee to stay outward. You just so, stay much more solid. So it's a compound, so you wanna use as many muscle groups as possible yeah. that are involved in it yeah. as you can in order to maximize, prevent imbalances yeah. and maximize the weight you can lift and therefore progressive overload and therefore progression and exactly. development. Exactly, exactly. So that's a, a nice little Beautifully cue. said. Yeah, you just, you screw out here where you feel that point of tension and then you lower yourself down. Yeah. Um, it also makes people um, descend slower into the squat. A lot of people, well, this is, again, we can talk about hip yeah. position here. We kind of can start to shift up into yeah. the hip. And, you know, there are different ways of squatting and I don't want to say that one way is wrong. I personally like to try to control the descent of my squat, uh, get to the bottom of the squat. For me, bottom of the squat means... Uh, the hip crease is lower than the upper part of the knee. Um, that is how I would define a uh, deep enough squat. And that's where you they can, define it in sport. That well. is how they define it in powerlifting. So for me, in that purpose, and, and, that's fine. And strongman. Yeah, and if you, strongman. Don't, if you don't reach that depth. Well, actually, in strongman, it's parallel <laughs> a lot of the time. But it's, same same parallel in powerlifting. Uh, Just they say go crease of the hip to below the knee. Yes, as a, but as in, in strongman, it's uh, level. It's not uh, below. Okay. So strongman is a little bit less uh, strict. They're like, come on, put more yeah. weight on. <laughs> just, just squat <laughs> everything. Um, but yeah, that, uh, that that is my way of squatting. That's my preferred way of squatting. It's not necessarily better. Um, but I do find that you can maintain more control over your squat. And you're not surprised by coming back up in your squat. So by me controlling right to the bottom of the squat and then pressing as hard as I can back to the top... I kind of know, like, on the way down, oh, yeah, I've got this, I've got this, I've got this, and then when I come back up, I know it's going to be there. You'll see a lot of Olympic lifters, for example, what I would call, like, dive-bombing a squat, and Olympic lifters, do not, don't get me wrong, some of them are unbelievably good at yeah, squatting. Incredibly strong. Like, squatting 300 kg, no knee sleeves, no belt, nothing, just reps, just bomb, bomb, bomb. They, they can be absolute monsters, don't get me wrong. But... Because of the nature of their sport, which is very explosive, a lot of the time they just drop as fast as they can into the bottom of the squat and then just try to press back out. But they the issue use there is... They that that recoil. Yeah, they're using exactly. They're yeah. using the recoil out of the bottom of the squat. The issue there can be, though, that if 
you go fast into the bottom of the squat and you're not sure of how, if you're going to get back up, you could come a quarter of the way back out of that squat and then you stop dead. And then you're going to have to bail your bar. And that's not an experience that we want to have. If we can avoid that, it would definitely yeah, You be can't possible. perceive how fatigued you are, really, because yeah. it's such an explosive movement. Yeah, so but also, like in terms of injury, injury wise, yeah, they Olympic lifters have incredible mobility and really stringent routines they they carry out daily in order to be able to keep themselves in the optimal position under massive massive loads and at great speed. Yeah, yeah? the normal person's mobility isn't going to be as good as those, and there will be some like nuances in their back positions and stuff like that. And when you come down with speed, you've got to imagine the momentum and the weight of your body plus the bar. If you were to happen to oh, slightly shift, or they call it the stripper squat. Yeah. Where you hit the bottom and then your body, your torso falls forward and your hips rise, and then you get a slight rounding in the lumbar spine. At some point, you sort of become, there's a mini point where you become weightless and it's all caught onto one part of the body. Yeah. And that's where a lot of injuries happen, whereas there's a sudden jolt, one part takes all the strain. Yeah. And that's probably, that, like most often, that's characterized by the hip shoots down into the bottom of the squat, the, sh the hip then comes back up, you stop, the hip then shoots back. And what happens because the hip shoots back, the knee shifts back as well. Yeah. And because the knee shifts back, you were in this optimal position, torso vertical, knee back forward, straight. back straight, everything coming back up at the same time. As soon as you come down, hip comes down, and then you shoot back with that hip, the knee comes back and all of your quad drive disappears. And it all goes into the lumbar spine. Yeah, so it all then transfers back here. You yeah. have no more front loading here of the quad. And then you'll get like the main driver, what should be the main driver of your squat, which is your quads, are then massively switched yeah. off. So you're then essentially doing what's called a good morning, yeah. which is you're trying to then hip hinge with the bar back on your yeah. on, But you're on using your more weight than you'd be able to good morning. Yeah, so, you, so you put yourself, you've got your legs involved, but you're just taking them out. So you're putting yourself in a very compromised permit and position And often there. people hurt their, hurt their yeah. lower backs. It's often and that's when you'll see someone backs, bail forward with their bar, yeah. because they've good morning the way up, the hip has come up, the chest is down, yeah. and then they just have to fall forward with the chest and the bar basically falls over the front of their head. So it's, it's not something we want to do. You, you will see, some, like often under really heavy loads, you will see people's torso shift slightly yeah. forward, but they're just trying to fight to maintain yeah. that position. And you want to keep that to as minimum as possible. I know when I've done like my heavier squats, yeah, you lose position where, oh, bit, yeah. yeah, like it shifts me forward, but I'm fighting to yeah. hold of that position. If I was to dive bomb in, I'm going to be so far over and maybe I get it, but I put so much of unnecessary strain on the structure of my body. So that's, that's uh, kind of a really good segue into like the torso angle, is that we want to try to fight for that torso angle as hard as you possibly can. If you feel that hip coming up and the torso shifting into a more horizontal position, it's, it's not impossible to get out of it, but it's definitely a lot more difficult to finish your squat. So I actually say to my clients quite often, I'd rather you move slower out of the bottom of your squat to get back to the top, with a better torso angle than to let it all compensate, shift into ba bad positions, and then you good morning it back up. You can do that. It's it, harder it's to program though, because it's not gonna be, you, you're not trying to do that. So there's not any sort of like active thought in it. So you can't, Same as with a round back deadlift. Yeah, you can't yeah. progressively overload that because yeah. one day you'll be stronger, one day you won't, one yeah. day it'll give way, one day it'll be fine. Yeah. It's just sort of like a, like a shot in the dark. There's yeah. no, you're not progressively overloading. You are just sort of, Dive bombing Cheating and hoping and compensating you drag it through. Yeah. Yeah, so it's it's hard for you then to program and get stronger and build that muscle. If you do so, it that so the main focus really should be here: try to maintain your torso angle for as long as you possibly can. Now, torso angle can vary. We always think like with a squat, we've got to be dead upright. Yeah. But depending on how tall you are, all, all other different torso aspects, length yeah, as well. hip hip angles, yep. you know, femur length, all that kind of different thing. Where you squat, you might be here, you might be there, here, any of these places, high bar, low bar. Yep. All of those different things. The main point is your back is straight. Yeah. Now your back is straight here. Your back is straight there. That's not a curved back. Like people think yep. when people lean forwards, that as long as they're still in that neutral position, that's absolutely fine. And it will vary depending on different people. Yeah. Typically, the more forward you lean, right, it's normally going to be taller athletes tend to lean forward more, and it's going to be there's going to be more involvement of the posterior chain, yep. so hamstrings, erectors, but it's still going to be a lot of quad involvement, glutes, and then the more upright, the more you're going to get quad activation, core, and stuff like that. So it's it's uh, there's not one rule fits all in terms of torso angle, but you want to fight for wherever you set yourself in your torso angle that you maintain that throughout the squat. And also, we can add on here that you know uh, what we're mostly talking about with a squat is a high bar squat. The high bar squat is where the bar is sitting on top of the trap, essentially, not on the cervical spine, not on the bone, 
but it's on top of that trap where the bar is sitting. And typically with a, with a high bar squat, you are gonna be able to maintain a more vertical torso position. With a low bar squat, which is basically typically sitting more like between the ridge of the rear delt and the trap, yeah. but it can be varying in position, but it is gonna be a little bit lower on the shoulder. Yeah. That is going to be, it is typically going to involve a little bit more posterior chain. It allows us to use a bit more musculature within the entirety of the yeah. body. And that's why the low bar squat typically is what you see the most in competition because you can actually do a bit more. Yeah. Um, however, I learnt from, guess who I'm about to say? Chris Duffin. Chris Duffin, <laughs> when I went out to Portland, he helped me with my squat hugely because what I found was, with my low bar squat, where that bar was sitting low on my back, I was like, yeah, I can shift loads of weight. And he said, yes, but the issue is that you're trying to separate your low bar and your high bar too much in position. Try to so make not your low bar, out. exactly. Yeah. Try to make your low bar look more like your high bar. Try to keep the chest up. Try to stay in that more neutral position. Try not to lean so far forward and let that bar break you forward because you've got the bar really low on your traps. So. Try to, even though you have that bar low on the sh shoulders, try to keep that chest upright. If you are a low bar squatter, try to stay a bit more upright and don't think because the bar's lower on my traps, it's gonna like fall off me or whatever. Yeah. Be brave and stand up. Yeah, if you, and if you have a really forward low bar position, that's your natural position, your high bar will be a little bit forward. Yeah. You don't wanna suddenly be like, wow, well, I'm gonna stand yeah, bar yeah, yeah. upright yeah, and yeah, my yeah. low bar's down here. Yeah, it's yeah. the same principle as like, if you're doing a deficit deadlift, you wouldn't just go like, Typically, you want it to be like one or two inches. Yeah. Your deficit deadlift, because then it's going to transfer over and make your deadlift better. You wouldn't be like, well, let's just put 18 inches up. Yeah. <laughs> let's go. I'm going to stand at an 18 inch block and just start going. Yeah. yeah. It's not going to transfer over to that yeah. movement. You it want to carry over between the two. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah, so that, that covers the torso angle, for example. That's uh, shoulders. Hugely important. So, when we now get to the shoulders, we can talk about, obviously, we kind of mentioned it already, the high bar versus low bar, which is yeah. where you're going to be placing the bar on the back. But we can also be talking about where do you put your hands? Where do you, do you go in really close? Do you go really far out? A lot of this is going to be dictated by um, your mobility. Is your mobility able to get you in close without discomfort, without what I would call like jacking the shoulders backward, like the, the sorry, the elbows backward, like that's not a good position to have those elbows like as you come back Just out of the squat, like shifting. Just going to to shift forward and exactly. your hips go backwards and everything like that. So we want to try to keep those elbows down a bit. Where can we keep those Pull elbows down? Pull the bar down? through you to activate yeah. the lats and keep on. Yeah. Rule of thumb would typically be, Yes, closer is better, yeah, in terms of tightness, but you go as close as you can without it affecting any pain in the shoulder, any pain in the elbow, having any effects on any other lift. Yeah. Because the difference that you get from having, like, say, here to here is going to be minimal in terms of the weight you can lift, and it may mean that you're too sore to bench press the next day. Yeah, because it can really beat up yeah, the elbow. You can't the curl, shoulder. you can't do any extensions, right? your shoulder, it, it, and it just, it, the the risk to reward isn't there. Yeah? yeah, so you'd like it ends up raising your fatigue massively for a small benefit in your squat. Now, if you only squatted, but that was all you did. Not a problem. Maybe you'd be all right. Yeah. But, but you'd it, be very But again, healthy. like your squat session affects your bench. Your, your squat session affects your deadlift. All of these things have effect And that on hand position else. is just not going to add enough. Like, it's, it's not going to make enough of a difference. the intensity yeah. by like 20 kilos. Yeah. It's just typically you go as close as you can. And I always say this to people and then I go, and this is where I hold them up. <laughs> yeah, so, it, I mean, again, this is also size as well. So, like, you can see, I keep on using him as a mannequin, but he's so bloody big that his... I'm trying to make myself look bigger now. So, because he's so big, it's going to be difficult for him to be able to slot into that bar tightly We're with his hands. We're actually five foot three. Imagine if both he were. We're actually standing right now. <laughs> <laughs> We're both Daddy DeVito. Um, <laughs> Yeah, but ha depending on how jacked you are, like if you're really jacked, you might just have to go wider with the arms. Yeah, more muscle of the shoulder is going to make it harder for you to externally rotate. Yeah. If you have really big biceps, big yeah. triceps, big it's shoulders, difficult. it's difficult to, to get into that really tight position. So you might just have to walk the hands a little bit yeah, further. So something like, you must have it here. Yeah. And you're just like, ah! And I would say also, the shoulder. Too really close isn't necessarily always better because what I actually see sometimes in people who have really close hand position is their elbows flare wider than their hand. So they're literally kind of like this. And you can't pull the bar down into you. You can't pull the bar down into you. Your traps completely switch off because you go into this position where the hands are out what the hands are in close and the elbows are out wide. Yeah. This completely relaxes. You have no more ridge for the bar to sit on. Bar can fall and this, forwards. this happens much more in very sort of lightweight, skinnier people who are yeah. just starting 
lifting, they might have no meat on them at all. So they they can just kind of like bring their arms in really close, but then their elbows flare out. So it's finding a nice in between where you feel tight. You're not building massive amounts of soreness in your elbows yeah, and your not, shoulders. When you come off the bar, you're not going. Ah! Yeah, we got your legs or anything. Yeah. Like, oh god! Yeah. Oh my yeah. arms. I squat 180 for five, but my elbow is breaking. Yeah, you, every you do the little like the peel off, and you go. Oh. Yeah, that's not what we want. Yeah, and we we've probably all been there a little bit, yeah. but yeah. but it, it just means that you might need to to change your position slightly. Um, I'd like our, our racks to be wider. To be brutally honest. Yeah, but you are the exception, remember that. <laughs> it's like 99% of people are fine, and then you're like pushing the rack to the limit of where you I can hold the hands. A bit um, so that kind of covers hand position and your width of the hands, but you can also kind of go over the false and the full oh, grip. Oh, yeah. So that's, that's, you know, it has some importance, but is there... I would say that I like to go with a full grip because I like to get a good sense of feeling my bar, but again, there are incredibly good squatters who go with a full grip, and they feel that they can still get tight enough with a full. And that's simply if you're already like you already hold the bar quite wide, and it feels tight on your shoulders and elbows. You'll go full. I go full grip when I squat, yeah, because full grip feels tight. Like okay. it feels like it then affects. And my again, you bench. can probably then feeling it, feel it in your elbow, feel it in yeah. your shoulder. So when I go full grip, it just takes off some of that stress. Yeah, and because I'm mainly a bencher. Like, don't want to. Make You're not. He's up. not a powerlifter. He's a bench. Let's be honest. Um, <laughs> I can squat five hundred pounds, um, which may not be great for my body weight. However, it's better than some. <laughs> um, so yeah, so that that it does have some impact. I would like to go full because I can actually feel my bar a little bit better. But you don't have to. There's not that. It's not that it. You will have a necessary. Like, typically, yeah. like if you can do a full grip on anything. Yeah. It will be you stronger. Will better. You can use full scripts to target, like to make things worse or to yeah. make things harder in certain positions. You typically will be stronger. But again, it's just if it causes. But again, pain. also that false, like you, what you can still do with the false though is you can still break that bar over the back. Yeah. You can still pull the bar it in. So you be still, a, it's just downward motion. Yeah. So you, you still it. have some connection to that bar. Yeah. It might not be quite as good, yeah. but if you're not able to do the full grip, Full grip is still okay. Bend the bar over your back. Bend the bar over the back, um, which kind of leads us to hip position as well. So, this is interesting. One. You know, uh, we spoke about this in the last video as well. Uh, the head is quite. It kind of leads the body to a large extent. Yeah. If you're looking massively down, there's a good chance, much like on that deadlift we were talking about, like that your hips going to shoot up. Yeah. The head, the head's going to be looking down at the floor, and you're in a suboptimal position. You're doing a little dive bomb. You you're fail. a little bit, bit of a dive and bomb. That's where you see people fall forward and their one leg goes in front of the other to catch themselves and they fall into the rack. Yeah. And if you've got a great rack, like to be fair, we've got a really good rack in our gym yeah. where it has several different levels, yeah. it will catch you and protect you. But yeah. if you've got one of those ones where you set the height, you just go in. You'll just die. You just go forward. Yeah. And that weight's coming with you. <laughs> <laughs> and if that's heavy, that is genuinely dangerous. It's very dangerous. So the lucky you... thing is, if you've got big plates on, typically your head isn't as big, so you'll kind of fit. Your yes. neck will <laughs> But if you've got loads of fives on, <laughs> you're in trouble. Yeah, don't do that. Yeah. Um, so Just to film how many plates you have. Yeah. 17 like, plates. Like, what's his name? Uh, Car Brad Castleberry. Oh. Is it Castleberry? <laughs> well, he had the weights on there. There's just, they were just all questions fake. whether who they were playing. <laughs> it was just all... Question, he did a thousand yeah. pound squat yeah, about like, it. No, you didn't. You've broken the record. Yeah. You should come do power yeah. No, no, no. I don't, I don't <laughs> want to do that. Um... He's still obviously strong. You probably could still yeah. squat 600 pounds. Still got a little like bit of muscle. But let's you know, not. Looks all right. Yeah, he looks all right. No, he's, he's very athletic <laughs> yeah, and very strong. Yeah, he is. But he's not squatting 1,000 pounds. Yeah. Let's not kid ourselves. Yeah. Um, anyway, um, so head position. So if you're looking down, it, often it is going to carry you downward. If you look up, I mean, it's it's okay, but again, it can actually mess up your position. If you're looking up, what it can do is it can lead you to kind of like push yeah. backward. And then not bar. press through the midfoot. You press through the heel, and exactly. then you get that kind of weird squat. Where you Which like is exactly like what other movement we were just talking about, the deadlift. So if, <laughs> if, you're, <laughs> if you're looking up with the deadlift, and if you're looking up with the squat, it's probably going to lead you to start shifting onto your heel. So and again, like we said in the deadlift video... That can be a cue that works for some people. Yeah. They have like certain restrictions in their mobility. We're so, not saying one size fits all. <laughs> but general, not generally, if people have got a sufficient level of mobility, yeah, look. I would say just look forward. If it quacks like a duck, it's probably a goose. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. There we go. Um, yeah. So uh, typically, looking forward is going to work for a lot of people. Yeah. Uh, because I mean, it's, it's going to keep you. 
Yeah, so you, a tin chuck. A tin, a tin chuck. Tin chuck. That's a person. So I actually like to, I actually like to pull the head slightly back because yeah. it allows me to keep super activated in really tight. the traps in yeah. the cervical spine. Make yourself look as spine. unattractive as possible. So the double chin. More chins. You That's can what get. I like to say. Is double chin yeah. slightly. Sort of but thing, angry double chin. Angry double chin. Angry double chin. Although, when although I've said well. this to my clients, I've been like, yeah. Tuck, tuck your chin in, tuck your chin in, and they're like, keep your chin, keep your chin towards your neck, and people have just gone, <laughs> <laughs> just gone, oh, and it was the best thing ever. Yeah, and they me. try and maintain that. They go, that's amazing. And then I just start pissing myself, and they're like, I thought I was doing it correctly. No, so they're like, this, they're, they're, like, like, oh. like they're like doing that, and I'm like, no, bring your chin down, and they're like, ah. It's just a deaf guy, the gym thing. This person's just screaming at. <laughs> yeah, and they made it. Just mouth over they, they did a whole rep. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, I really can't. That's got to be the thumbnail for this video. That's the first thing. But so, it was brilliant. And they loved it, wasn't it? Because that's not what I meant. They were like, it's clear that he's clearly lost his mind. He's now telling me to hold my lower jaw, but keep the other bit open. And just... Ah! So it's for a horror movie. Yeah. It sounds horrific. Very good for pulling your neck. Yeah. So, so much tension. Yeah. <laughs> Don't do that. Terrible for bracing. Yeah. Terrible for breathing. You lose <laughs> all your air immediately. It's just seeping out. Your <laughs> <laughs> belt falls off. I everything just goes. <laughs> yeah. So don't yeah. don't do that. No point don't open, open your, your mouth yeah. and touch tuck it your chin. Yeah. <laughs> We've done the joke too many times. <laughs> 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 anyway, one of those things that really lost that mind. Yeah. yeah. If we, if other, I'm like, sure other people are going to watch this, they're going to just be like, "All right, we get the yeah, idea. Yeah. We just keep going." You don't deep. care about lifting that much. So many people are like, "God, you guys are weird," because we just go <laughs> deeper and deeper and deeper into the joke. Anyway, um, but if you do that in the gym, it will make my day. Oh, we'll we'll love yeah. you forever. Just if like we see you just scream go, open <laughs> while you're you're squatting. But only do it the right way. We're not trying to get you hurt. Yeah. All right. Do it with a Health reasonable and way, and then we can laugh. Uh, if we see you die, it's not so funny. Yeah. Um, well, then we'll probably get be. sued for it. Yeah. Just, see, oh. just then, just becomes a trend of yeah. everyone. Says, ah. oh, no, this is better. But see, we're still on the joke. Get past it. Get past it. Get past it. Okay. Um, so we kind of run through everything now. We've yeah, got up to quite the head. Ready, um, yeah. Clever. Yeah. I'm clever. Bottom to um, the top. Bottom to the top. Um, now we're here. But hair. Probably should tie your hair up. Yeah. Quite uncomfortable if you have it down. If you look like you him, if you look like right a jacked to Aragorn, if you look like Aragorn <laughs> oh, on steroids, that's the best thing I ever heard. I know you're happy. I might like cry. You cry. Yeah. That would get us views if you were to say, "Ah, ah, ah." go up to Weathertop and cry. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So that's basically it, guys. That's correct. That's yeah. correct. End uh, of that, this has been episode eleven. One more. Uh, like, subscribe, comment, all that stuff. Ring really appreciate it. You can contact us, obviously, on our. Websites, Instagram pages, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, comment. And, uh, did you say comment? I did say comment, yeah. Comment again. Comment three times. Oh, have a conversation with yourself. Anything helps the algorithm as well. So yeah. if you want to just start hey, And let's be honest, the algorithm, we're not in the algorithm. We're not in the algorithm. <laughs> the algorithm hasn't acknowledged that yeah. we exist yet. Yeah, like... There's several algorithms before it's we just get Greg into the algorithm. It's just Greg Doucette and more dates, yeah. and they just throw more algorithm yeah. at them. Before I understand, they're, they're great. Yeah, they're very good. Greg Doucette's very yeah. high-pitched. But, but does he put his chin on his does chin? He, does he scream his yeah. chin yeah. every single time? Just it. Probably not. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> All right, well, thank you very much, guys. See you next time. Bye. Bye.